variability in terms of uh, cluster, small cluster, no wing, big cluster, many wings, as well as leaf morphology. Nebbiolo is grown in uh, different locations in Piedmont, characterized by different climatic and pedological conditions. There are three main areas of production. The South Piedmont is the most well known. The Lange area has been declared UNESCO heritage site since 2014. In this area, they produce well known wines such as Barole Barbaresco, I already mentioned. It's a hilly area characterized by, generally, by a loamy clay calcareous soil with a basic pH. The second, for importance, uh, site of production of the Biolo grapes is located in northeast Piedmont. In this place, they produce wine known with the name of Gattinara Gemme Lessona. Again, is another hilly area, but closer to the mountain range, so the climate is a little bit colder. And uh, uh, the soil is typically sandy and with acidic pH. There is a third area here. This is quite typical. It's a mountain area in northwest Piedmont. The Nebbiolo in this uh, area is grown on very steep, slow, rocky soil. And also the trellis is very different. It's pergola trellis, while in the other sides are vertical trellis. Well, the target of the trial was to compare the response of the same clone of Nebbiolo when grown in different locations, characterized by different climatic and pedological conditions. The clone we choose uh, was the, third, uh, the 63, is a, a good quality clone, and the site uh, were located in La Mora, southern Piedmont, and Lesona, northeast Piemont. We carry out for three vintages observation on field behavior and grape composition, and we focus the attention on the phenolic content and the grape aromatic content. Few words uh, about the experimental vineyards. As you can see, they differ a little bit in terms of orography. Well, first of all, we have to locate Piedmont in the west, northwestern corner of Italy. This is Piedmont, and this is the northeast where Lesona is located, and this is south part of Piedmont where La Mora is located. Well, I was saying that the sites differ in terms of orography. Hilly in La Mora, just gentle hill in Lesona. Training system, vertical. Pruning system, Guyot, and rooftop. 420A are the same. The density of vine per hectare is a little bit in favor of the Lesona vineyards. But what really differ is the soil. In La Mora, the soil is basic soil, loamy clay calcareous soil with a pH of 8.4, while in Lesona, the soil is typically sandy with a pH of 4.8 almost. Also, in terms of climate, there are some light differences. Uh, the main one are the, um, the temperature, a little bit higher in South Piedmont. The place is also uh, less rainy compared to the Lesona, as can be well seen in, in the two graphs. We move fast to the result. So, what about field performances? To be short, I show you just the, the two main features of field performances. That is to say, yield and vigor. Well, the vigor was in favor of the Lesona vineyards, despite the fact that the vineyard is on sandy soil. And that probably was due to the shorter cane pruning that they use in that part that gives, I mean, more growth to the shoots. On the contrary, the yield was the opposite. Uh, the yield was much higher in uh, Lesona on clay soil, almost double. 
That means uh, two kilos compared to a little bit more than one kilos in the sonar. In more general terms, I can say that in La Mora they produce eight, nine ton per hectare, while in the sonar, five, six ton per hectare. Great composition, where well, we didn't find uh, significant differences in terms of uh, soluble solids uh, between the two sides. The soluble solids were very high, as usually for Nebbiolo grapes, and that was despite the higher yield in La Sona. The pH was, uh, on the contrary, lower in La Sona, and that was mainly due to the tartaric acid uh, amount and despite the lower malic acid in, in La Sona. Another possibility. Uh, about the increase of pH in the sauna could be due to the potassium uptake higher because they fertilize in a heavier way the, the poor sandy soil. So probably they uh, give too much <laughs> potassium. Well, more interesting results are about uh, phenolic compounds, not just in terms of quantity, because again, we didn't find significant differences in terms of uh, total flavonoids and total anthocyanins. The flavonoids were very high, again, as typical for Nebbiolo grapes, and uh, the same, the uh, total anthocyanin were a little bit lower in La Mora, but we have to remind the much higher yield in this, in this uh, location. More interesting are the results about the quality of the anthocyanins. In other words, about the uh, great uh, anthocyanin profile. Uh, we heard yesterday, we know that uh, the profile is typical of each variety. However, the uh, environment within this varietal profile can play an important role in modifying the reciprocal percentage of the different anthocyanins. That's what's happening in our trial where we found that in the, in the grape produced in La Sona, the peonidin-3-glucoside was always higher compared to the grapes produced in La Mora. And on the contrary, the delphinidin malvidin 3 glucoside was lower, and the opposite, of course, for the grape in La Sona. So this is uh, important because this feature can have uh, uh, important effect on the stability uh, on the intensity of the wine color uh, of a red wine age uh, a red age wine like the one produced with Nebbiolo because we know that the, the three substituted antocyanins such as malvidin, uh, delphinidin, etc are much more stable during fermentation though they are the antocyanins that better contribute to the wine color. Similar result we, we found uh, in terms of grape uh, aromatic compounds. Well, this uh, bound aromatic precursor are regarded in the last year with higher uh, attention also for uh, not just for uh, uh, aromatic variety, but also for uh, varieties such as ne the Nebbiolo, because uh, the red age wine can be uh, improved in terms of uh, uh, bouquet complexity and intensity by this variety. I remind you that uh, terpenes gives rose flavor to the wine, the norisoprenoids give exotic fruit, apple and violet flowers, as well as the benzenoids give flower and fruit flowers. Well, again, in the grape produced in the sauna, that means in the, on mm, clay soil, uh, the grapes were always richer, significantly richer, in benzenoid, terpenes, and norisoprenoid compared to the one produced in the sauna on sandy soil. So we can say that uh, the southern uh, Piedmont confirmed its fame to be a, a good place to grow Nebbiolo. Well, 
we move uh, to the conclusion. So our study indicated that environment had a strong influence on agronomic performances. We saw that uh, in La Mora, uh, vineyards produce much more without affecting uh, soluble solid and uh, uh, phenolic amount in, in the grapes. Again, we found a significant impact of the environment on the qualitative aspect of antochanins, and the environment may uh, modify these uh, uh, compounds, the reciprocal percentage of these compounds in one, uh, uh, in one way or the other, and that, again, can have potentially important implication on the wine color and the intensity. The environment has a significant impact also on the amount of grape-bound aromatic substances. We saw that in La Mora these substances were much richer in, in the grapes, so again the environment can potentially give a, a contribution to the intensity and the complexity of the wine bouquet. That's after the aging, because we know that these bound uh, substances uh, during aging undergo uh, hydrolysis, so they lower the uh, perception threshold, and so uh, after aging they may give this contribution to flavor. So, summarizing the result, we can say that uh, the trial confirmed how a specific terroir may give a local imprinting to the grape composition, and so determine the typicality of different uh, Vicupere wine, uh, terroir wine, we can say. Well, uh, I have to thank also my collaborators. This is Poldo, this is my dog. He follows me very often in the vineyards. And uh, Deborah Santini and Alessandra Mollo. Thank you for the attention.